Ethan placed his small hands on her tummy, closed his eyes and said a heartfelt prayer. Dear God, please give my mommy a brother for me. I know you love them both, but sometimes I worry. I worry that your love for Ethan might overshadow Nathanael's place as our own flesh and blood. Woman, Ethan remains our first son. He brought us joy and hope when we Ethan needed lay it on the floor, pale and cold. The room fell silent as the guards rushed to his side. Their faces etched with horror. Hmm. What happened to Prince Ethan? What will be the fate of the Azulu kingdom? Will Deborah ever allow Ethan to be crowned as the heir apparent to the throne? This is how it all started. Prince Ethan, who had grown into a handsome young man, was known for his wisdom and kindness. His brother, Prince Nathaniel, was equally handsome, but was known for his sense of humor and lively spirits. They were inseparable, sharing every adventure and always supporting each other. One sunny morning, King Charles, their father, summoned his sons to the royal chambers with a serious expression. He said to Prince Ethan, My son, the time has come for you to start looking for a bride. It is one of the requirements for crowning you as the heir apparent to the throne. Our people need to see that their future king is ready to take on the responsibilities that come with leadership, including starting a family. Prince Nathaniel, always quick with a joke, burst into laughter. <laughs> Brother, it is time for you to find a beautiful bridal. Beautiful bridal. I can't wait to have handsome and beautiful nephews and nieces running around the palace. Prince Ethan chuckled, feeling a mix of excitement and apprehension. He knew the importance of the task before him and was determined to find a bride who would not only be a queen but also a true partner in leading the kingdom. Prince Ethan set out on his quest. He visited neighboring kingdoms, attended grand balls and met many young women. Despite the pressure of his royal duty, he remained true to his heart, searching for someone who shared his values and vision for Azulu kingdom. Meanwhile, in a quaint village not far from the grand halls of Azulu, the former queen, Deborah, was seen seated with anger. The memories of her downfall haunted her, and her resentment festered with each passing day. She stood clutching a glass of wine. The news she had received was too much to bear. In a fit of anger, she smashed the glass against the wall. Her face twisted with fury. So, after all my warnings, King Charles still insists on naming Ethan as his heir apparent. Standing before her was a guard, a member of King Charles' royal guards, disguised in black cloak. He had been secretly feeding Deborah information, giving her every detailed information of everything happening in the palace, betraying his king for reasons only known to him. The guard stepped forward cautiously. I have done as you asked. The news of Ethan's ascension to the throne has been confirmed. King Charles is resolute in his decision. Deborah's eyes blazed as she regarded the guard. You have served me well, she said, but this is not over. I will not allow Ethan to sit on that throne. Because of him, I lost everything and I will see him pay. My son Nathaniel must ascend the throne of Azulu kingdom, and I will make sure of that. She thundered, her mind racing with dark thoughts and vengeful plans. I will continue to gather information, your majesty, he said. Whatever you need, I will provide. Deborah's lips called into a cold, sinister smile. Good, she replied. We will strike when they least expect it. Let them celebrate now. Their joy will be short-lived. One sunny afternoon, back at Azulu Kingdom, Prince Ethan and his guards were strolling through the bustling squares of Azulu Kingdom, taking in the sights and sounds of the kingdom they cherished. As they walked, they heard a distressed cry for help. Their attention was drawn to a beautiful young lady being robbed by two masked robbers. Without a moment's hesitation, Prince Ethan and his guards rushed to her aid. 
The robbers, startled by the sudden intervention, fled the scene, leaving the young lady trembling but unharmed. Prince Ethan extended his hand to her, helping her to her feet. As their eyes met, he found himself captivated by her beauty and grace. Are you all right? He asked, still holding her hand. The young lady rose, nodded. Her eyes locked with his. Yes, thank you. I don't know what I would have done without your help. Prince Ethan, regaining his composure, offered to escort her to her home to ensure her safety. He visited her the next day to know how she was faring. In their discussion, he learned that Rose, though poor, was rich in knowledge and kindness. She spoke eloquently about the kingdom's affairs, her insights impressing him deeply. From that day on, Prince Ethan found reasons to visit Rose as often as he could. Each visit left him more enchanted by her intelligence and compassion. Days turned into weeks, and Prince Ethan realized that he couldn't go a day without seeing Rose. Her presence had become essential to him, and he felt a profound connection growing between them. She was unlike anyone he had ever met. One evening, as they sat under a modest garden, Ethan looked into her eyes and felt a surge of certainty. My rose, he began. I believe I have found my queen in you. Your beauty, kindness and wisdom have captured my heart. Rose blushed, her eyes shining with emotion. And you, my prince, have brought light and hope into my life. I never imagined such a connection could exist. Prince Ethan knew then that his search for a bride was over. Rose was everything he had been looking for and more. She was his queen in heart and spirit, and he was determined to make her his queen in title as well. It is done, a voice declared. He has fallen for me. What is the next plan? In the dimly lit room, lo and behold, Rose stood before Deborah, the transformation from the kind lady that Prince Ethan adored to this scheming accomplice was startling. Good, Deborah said, you have done well. The next step is to play along. Be the perfect bride he thinks you are. Gain his trust and affection completely. I will keep you updated on the next phase of my plan. Rose nodded. What about my sister? Rose asked. Her voice stained with concern as she faced Deborah. Don't worry about your sister, she replied. She is in good hands. I promise she will be fine as long as you play along and stick to her plans. Rose noted the welfare of her sister was her primary motivation, the reason she had agreed to this treacherous scheme in the first place. She knew that any misstep could jeopardize her sister's safety, and she couldn't afford to let that happen. I will do whatever it takes, Rose said firmly. Just ensure my sister remains safe. Deborah gave a cold smile, satisfied with Rose's commitment. Back in the kingdom, Prince Ethan remained blissfully unaware of the dark clouds gathering on the horizon. His heart was full of love for Rose, his mind occupied with plans for their future together. He believed he had found his perfect queen, a partner to rule beside him with wisdom and compassion. Little did he know that behind Rose's captivating smile lay a plot that could shake the very foundations of her Zulu kingdom. Prince Ethan couldn't contain his excitement as he shared the news with his brother, Prince Nathaniel. Brother, guess what? I have found a bride, he declared, his eyes sparkling with joy. Prince Nathaniel laughed and clapped his brother on the back. That's wonderful news. I knew you would find someone special. You must bring her to meet father right away. Prince Ethan nodded, smiling. I will make the arrangements. I want everything to be perfect. They giggled and laughed as Nathaniel hailed him. Hours later, in Rose's mother's home, she was nestled in Prince Ethan's arms, feeling the warmth of his embrace. Her heart skipped a bit when he spoke softly to her. My Rose, it's time for you to meet my father, the king. 
Shock and fear flashed across Rosie's face. The thought of meeting King Charles terrified her. She scrambled for an excuse, her mind racing. But, but I don't have a presentable dress, she stammered. Ethan smiled, his eyes full of understanding and love. He reached beside him and produced a beautiful dress, its fabric shimmering in the soft light. I thought you might say that. I brought this for you. Rose hesitated, taking the dress from him with trembling hands. Do you think the king will accept a commoner like me? Ethan's smile widened and gently lifted her chin, making her look into his eyes. My father is a kind man who doesn't judge people based on their background. He will see the wonderful person you are just as I do. There is nothing to worry about. Despite his reassuring words, Rose couldn't shake her anxiety. She was playing a dangerous game, one that could unravel at any moment. But she had to keep her sister in mind and continue with the plan. The day of the meeting arrived and Rose found herself in the grand palace, feeling out of place but determined. She wore the dress Prince Ethan had given her, looking every bit the part of a future queen. As they approached the throne, her heart pounded in her chest. King Charles stood as they entered, her wise eyes falling upon Rose. He smiled warmly. Welcome, my daughter. I have heard so much about you. Rose caught seed. Her voice steady despite her nerves. Thank you, your majesty. It's an honor to meet you. The meeting with the royal family was a resounding success. Rose! Adorned in the beautiful dress Prince Ethan had given her, captivated everyone with her beauty and eloquence. She spoke with grace and intelligence. King Charles, observing Rose with a discerning eye, found himself genuinely charmed by her demeanor. Her humility and wisdom shone through, and he could see why his son had fallen for her. As the evening progressed, the king's initial reservations faded. They ate and drank, laughter filling the grand hall. Rose's genuine kindness and warmth endeared her to everyone present. Even Prince Nathaniel, known for his teasing and playful nature, was impressed and delighted by his brother's choice. Rose felt a mix of relief and resolve. She had succeeded in the first part of her mission, but she knew the path ahead was still fraught with challenges. Days later, King Charles summoned Prince Ethan, Prince Nathaniel and the Kingdom's Council to the Royal Chambers. The purpose of the gathering was to decide the dates for Prince Ethan's coronation as the heir apparent, a significant milestone in the Kingdom's history. The council members discussed the logistics and timing. After careful deliberation, they unanimously agreed on a date that would allow ample time for preparations. King Charles beamed with pride, his eyes resting fondly on his sons. It is settled then. The date is set and the preparations shall commence immediately. The news spread quickly throughout the kingdom, igniting excitement and joy among the people. Prince Ethan's impending coronation became the talk of Azulu Kingdom, with everyone eagerly anticipating the grand celebration. Prince Nathaniel, ever the supportive brother, promised to choose the best outfit for Ethan. I want you to look your absolute best on your special day, he declared with a grin. Leave it to me. I will make sure you are the most regal looking prince Azulu has ever seen. Ethan laughed. Appreciating Nathaniel's enthusiasm and support, I trust your judgment, brother. I know you will make me look great. King Charles watched his sons with a heart full of pride. Their bond was unbreakable, their love for each other evident in every interaction. Seeing their work together, support each other and share in the joy of this significant moment filled him with immense satisfaction. Deborah summoned Rose. She handed her a small bottle containing a potion. On the day of the coronation, Deborah instructed coldly, You are to poison Prince Ethan with this. 
He will not receive any food or drink offered by you, and no one will suspect you. Ensure it is done. If you refuse, remember that I have eyes everywhere. Rose's heart sank as she stared at the portion. No, she said firmly. This isn't what I agreed to. I can't kill him. I can't kill anyone. You never told me killing a human being was part of the plan. Deborah's expression hardened. Young lady, do not mistake my patience for weakness. If you fail to follow through, I will ensure your sister suffers the consequences. You are not in a position to defy me. Rose resolve wavered. Her fear for her sister's safety overwhelming her love for Ethan. She knew that Deborah was not bluffing. With a heavy heart and tears in her eyes, Rose took the potion from Deborah. Her hands shaking. I will do it. Please, spare my sister. Do not fail me, Rose. Remember, I am always watching. Back at her mother's home, she collapsed in tears, her heart aching with the turmoil of her situation. The love she had developed for Prince Ethan clashed violently with the duty imposed upon her. She spent the night in agony, torn between her deep affection for Ethan and the desperate need to protect her sister. Every time she closed her eyes, she saw Ethan's smiling face his kindness and the future they had begun to imagine together. Yet, she also saw the fear and vulnerability of her sister. <laughs> On the much anticipated day of Prince Ethan's naming as the heir apparent to the throne, the palace was abuzz with excitement. Dignitary from neighboring kingdoms, elders and the people of Azulu gathered to witness the momentous occasion. King Charles sat proudly ready to officially declare Prince Ethan as his successor. However, as the minutes ticked by, there was no sign of the prince. Concern greased the king's brew, and he motioned for the guards to fetch Prince Ethan from his chambers. The guards knocked on Prince Ethan's door, but there was no response. With mounting urgency, they forced the door open, only to be met with a chilling sight. Ethan lay on the floor, pale and cold. The room felt silent as the guards rushed to his side, their faces edged with horror. <laughs> Relax, let me take you back a few hours ago. Rose carried a tray with a steaming cup of coffee. She approached Ethan with a gentle smile. Prince Ethan reached out for the coffee and pulled her into his arms. I want you to know, my queen, Ethan said, that I will always treat and respect you for the rest of my life. I love you so much, my Rose. Tears welled up in Rose's eyes as she felt the depth of his words. As Ethan was about to take a tea from the coffee, Rose's heart could take no more. She smashed the cup from his hand, the coffee spilling and shattering on the floor. I can't do this, she cried. Her voice breaking with emotion. I can't kill you. Ethan's eyes widened in shock as he looked at the broken cup and then at Rose. Rose took a deep breath, her voice trembling as she revealed the truth. Deborah, your mother, kidnapped my sister and threatened to kill her if I didn't poison you. This drink is poisoned. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. Ethan's face turned from shock to resolve. He took Rose's hand in his, his expression one of both sadness and determination. We need to act quickly. We cannot let this go any further. Ethan devised a plan to turn the tables. He instructed his most trusted guards to secretly move to Deborah's hideout. He would pretend to be dead, creating a ruse to lure Deborah and her accomplices into a false sense of accomplishment. He secretly summoned the king and his brother Nathaniel, and they all agreed to the plan. As the celebration of Ethan's supposed demise began in Deborah's hideout, the atmosphere was one of twisted joy. They drank and married. Let me see if he won't coronate Nathaniel as the heir apparent to his throne, Deborah said victoriously. However, 
Their triumph was short-lived. The guards acting under Ethan's orders surrounded the hideout, catching everyone off guard. In the chaos that ensued, they rescued Rose's sister, who had been imprisoned and was in a state of relief and disbelief. Deborah and her accomplice, including some of the king's guard, who had been bright, were apprehended. Deborah, realizing her plans had been thwarted, could only watch in stunned silence as she was taken away. The guards ensured that everyone involved in the conspiracy was captured and taken into custody. Ethan and Rose, now free from the dark threat that had loomed over them, embraced each other. The kingdom of Azulu could now celebrate not just the coronation of a new heir, but also the triumph of love and justice. Years later, King Ethan ruled the kingdom of Azulu with great wisdom and insight, alongside his beloved queen, Rose, and his loyal brother, Prince Nathaniel, who served as his trusted hand. The conspirators, including Deborah and the corrupt guards, were sentenced to spend the rest of their lives in prison ensuring that their betrayer could no longer harm the kingdom thank you so much for watching if you have not subscribed to our channel please do like and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of our amazing stories bye, bye. <laughs>